Welcome to City Talk, a weekly conversation produced by the City of Waco to inform you about city events and projects. Each week, we'll bring you interesting topics with city staff and community leaders to highlight how Waco is an exciting place to live and work. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Cook, Director of Parks and Recreation here for the City of Waco and want to welcome to you another edition of City Talk to where we sit down, talk to different people from our staff members, community members to really find out uh, that latest happenings, what's going on here in Waco and today I'm excited to bring one of our crew team members, uh, Megan Davis, to the studio with us today and I tell you what, uh, Megan Davis is a longtime employee of the City of Waco within our Parks and Recreation Department and if you've done any event in Waco or any type of community activity, you've probably crossed paths. Megan, welcome here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it having us on today. Sure. Well, you know, it is summertime. Things are kicking up. Kids are out of school. Weather has been rainy, but we're getting a little bit nicer. Megan, I, I tell you, this is when your time to shine is. we got a lot of activities going on. Uh, but before we get started and talking about some different events, community programming, I want to know a little bit about yourself. Give us a little background on how long you've been with the city and what your current role is. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so I've been with the city for 13 years here in this, this position. Um, started off actually at the zoo, uh, gosh, 2003, so 18 years technically, but I was with the uh, so Zoological Society, but background in events and marketing, as you mentioned, anytime there's an event on city property, I'm probably behind the scenes running around a little crazy, but it's my passion and I love what I do. Um, I'm currently overseeing uh, the Community Engagement Division in Parks and Rec, um, so that entails, you know, community outreach, uh, marketing for our department, community events, and then there's also our Park Ranger program, so uh, a lot going on right now in our department. Well, I tell you, our department, I really see us, uh, I always call us the people department. Um, and, and whether that's working with uh, different departments on the internal side of the city, but really the community engagement, that's what our department is all about. And really what we strive, and it's not just our department, other departments throughout the city, really creating that connection. And, and really the word says it all, community engagement. And so uh, one of the core things that you do, however, um, are, are what we call events. And we all know we, we've been through about a year, year and a half, with the pandemic to where everything came to a screeching halt. And uh, I tell you, fortunately, we've been blessed here locally with, with some lower numbers and vaccination rates going up to where we've been able to get back to business a little bit. So looking forward, tell us a couple things that we've done recently as far as races or different events. And then we want to look a little bit coming forward on what we have coming up. Perfect. Well, as you know, when the Baylor men's basketball team won the national championship, we were tasked to put together a parade, which we did really quickly, but it brought the community together. And we really saw, you know, that people were being as responsible as they could during the, during this time, but it really opened up the door for other community events. And like you said, as, as the vaccination rate goes up and our numbers go down as far as it relates to COVID, we've seen these applications coming across our desk. And it's super exciting. I mean, this last weekend we hosted a, a half marathon with 1,500 people and the economic impact it's incredible when we can bring these folks from regional, you know, statewide, uh, you know, coming to showcase our city. Um, you know, upcoming weeks, we have our annual Juneteenth celebrations. We have a big family fun day. We have our annual Juneteenth parade. That's super, you know, it's really exciting to see. Um, we have another uh, triathlon this upcoming weekend. So like, you, like I said, things are just coming in, in full force. You know, and I know firsthand, and when you go back, I, uh, looking back, April and May, uh, historically in, in September and October as well. Uh, there's times we're doing 30 events per, per month. Uh, every weekend, multiple things. I know we had an Art on Elm event, uh, the Waco Chalk Walk. So these are events that are coming back, but we're not even at 100% yet. But I know a lot of people are anxious to get back out. And, and you mentioned one event that I want to talk about, and, and that's our Juneteenth celebration here in Waco. And um, I know I, I started back in the city in 2001, and uh, this parade was going on then. And I tell you, you can go back in the books and been traveling down Elm Avenue. And last year, I, I tell you, it was just one of the only events that were it was able to, to maintain during COVID because, you know, a, a parade route, you can distance out. And so we still had our Juneteenth parade. Tell us a little bit about this year. we got a lot of construction going down. So give us a little bit. I think there's a couple changes to the route that I'd like the people to know about. Sure, yeah. Well, the Juneteenth parade, like you said, it's annually travel down Elm Street and as we start to develop Elm Avenue. You know, there is construction, so we have a few hiccups in the route, but not 
It's not going to stop us showcasing um, Elm Avenue. Uh, this year they are going to start at Heritage Square rather than at Paul Quinn Campus. So on the downtown, on the City Hall side, on right? On the City Hall side of Heritage Square. And basically they're going to go backwards on the parade route. So Heritage Square down Elm. Uh, the really the great thing about this year's route is we're going to bypass uh, Wilbur Austin Senior Park yeah. where we have another Juneteenth celebration going on. It's a, a it's a collaboration between our public health district and the NAACP. We're going to do a mobile vaccination clinic. So we'll be able to take the, the parade around Wilbert Austin Park, reconnect to Elm, and in there at Paul Quinn Campus. So, well, and really showcase the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Um, and a lot of the projects we have going on uh, with the streetscaping and different things. I, I tell you, you talk about some energy. The Bridge Street Plaza, what, what we're calling Waco's Front Porch, is nearing yeah. completion. So it, it's definitely coming up. That, that one's on, on the books. And then... We look a couple weeks ahead, and uh, I, I know in our office, it, it's sort of all hands on deck here, is last year we were not able to host a July 4th event. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tell you, that's probably one of the hardest things we had to do, that and our, our Waco Wonderland event. But you take away fireworks from the people of Waco, and uh, I tell you, something's just not right. Didn't feel the same, and that's when I think COVID hit home for all of us, because it's like, man, you know, this is to the point we're not even able to do fourth on the Brazos. But here we are this year. Um, and, and I'll say, you know, we started uh, back at the start of the year and saying, well, I just don't know if we're going to be able to do it. Then we went to like, uh, well, I think maybe just fireworks only. Maybe it'll be a drive work firework, or drive in fireworks, you know, and it's just sort of built upon itself or itself. Now here in the past month or so, we've gotten the okay and we think, uh, you know, we got the protocols in line. We're looking at a full return of fourth on the Brazos. So tell us a little bit about what we've got planned for this year's event. Perfect. Yeah, so we are. We're, we're really excited to bring Fourth on the Brazos back to Touchdown Alley next to McLean Stadium. Uh, partnering with Baylor to use their, their property as it provides a safe location, a great location for folks to be able to spread out um, there at Touchdown Alley. And like you said, we even have the option that you can you can stay in your car if you'd like, if you feel more comfortable to watch the fireworks show. But we will kick off on that Sunday, July 4th. Yes, Sunday. Gates open at 6 p.m. We'll have our, our same, you know, what we've had in the past. We'll see the live music. We'll have an array of food trucks. Um, people can bring in their own picnic baskets if they like um, and then we'll kick off the fireworks show at 9 15 and we're you know we're excited to bring back like the Waco community band the traditions sure. that we've had with July 4th as long as I can remember so they will also be joining us to uh, play with our fireworks show but yeah so it's going to be a fun a fun night we'll have details on our social media sites and our, our website so definitely you know follow along as, as we make those updates and, and announcements well, and you mentioned that uh, I know we rolled out an announcement about a week ago mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be steady all the way up uh, introducing who we have on our food lineup, our musical lineup. Uh, you mentioned the partnerships and the Waco Community Band, a longtime partner, uh, and, and obviously HEB as well. HEB does a great job in helping us present this event every year with the fireworks show. You mentioned Baylor University, but on, on the inside internally, uh, this one's just not our department. This is a true collaboration from the city side. Um, I, I know Waco PD, you're looking at, at everyone, you know, full plan, doing the traffic control, our traffic departments out. Um, it takes a lot of people. Our parks crews are out there making sure uh, the site is set up and clean. It's just such a production. I'm expecting a huge crowd this year. Now, one of the great things, and, and uh, you know, I know we, we uh, still do events in downtown this year. Uh, suspension bridge under construction, <laughs> probably couldn't do it anyway, but I think this is our sixth year out at Touchdown Alley, correct? It is our sixth year, and like I said, it's been a great collaborative effort. Um, you know, and mentioning just city internal it, collaboration as well. I mean, you're right. It is a definitely a team effort from emergency management down to Waco PD. I mean, we've got everyone at the table when we have these, you know, planning meetings. But yeah, six years at Touchdown Alley and we've just, it's just proven to be, like I said, a very safe environment. It's been, it's proven to been wow. where we can spread out, you know, and the parking is there. So there's a lot of great things working with Baylor that well, we can I'll utilize. That, that Touchdown Alley, and if you haven't made it out there, I mean, it's one of our great venues that we've got developed along the riverfront and the spacing is very crucial. Yes. Um, another cool thing is you sort of get that eye level view of the fireworks. Mm -hmm. We shoot it from the Baylor side. Um, but a couple tricks, uh, tips, I, I should say. Um, if you don't want to battle the big crowds, you can always go and park at the Ferrell Center. Sure. Um, you can still see great fireworks from there. You can line up and down the river walk. Mm -hmm. So great viewing areas all around, even if you don't want to come inside the event area. Uh, for those that do come to the event area, um, I always say parking uh, and people, oh, a lot of crowds. 
get there early, take your time. Uh, we do have bag checks coming in to create a safe environment. Uh, but, but those are things, there's different lots. We'll be posting maps on the best places to park. Um, and I tell you what, uh, it, it is a great event and it's a great location for it. And we're glad to get back in action. So uh, anything else on July 4th looking forward that you think the people should know? No, I think we've pretty much covered everything from parking to getting there early. Like you said, make it a relaxing experience for your family. Come out early, you know, sit around, enjoy the music. It's, it's just going to be really exciting to see people back together again for this year. Sure. Well, we're ready for it now. Everything else uh, we've got going on, and events are one thing. Um, and, and I'll mention, uh, you go in, I, I'm going to say Brazos Nights as well, and that's our annual concert series. Uh, now, traditionally, we, we always do our Brazos Nights concerts uh, in April, mm -hmm. May, June, and you lead up, and we really conclude with July 4th. However, this year we're a little flipped around. So tell us a little bit about where we are. Are we going to see Brazos Nights concerts this year? You know, we are. We're looking at, you know, a fall format, hopefully to have some, some concerts in the fall. So, you know, a little reverse of the calendar year this year. But, you know, we do want to bring something back down to downtown Waco. And Brazos Nights is where it's at. People are, you know, it's a tradition that we've seen. And people love it. There are free concert series. So looking in September and October, we hope to see something downtown. Well, and Nights. you mentioned one thing, and I said earlier, you know, uh, Indian Spring Park, we churn Traditionally, do the Brazos Nights there, but we've got our suspension bridge under construction. So I, I know as a department, we're looking at some uh, alternate areas, maybe Heritage Square in downtown. Uh, you know, the fall's a great time. We got a lot of people, people coming in town for Baylor games. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, man, once again, check out our website at BrazosNightsWaco.com for July 4th information. We'll have it on our social media accounts as well. And uh, I tell you, we're about a month out. We're ready for it. Um, one other thing, I know right now we are battling some flood conditions. Um, and uh, a lot of times uh, people love to sailgate, as we call it, and take their boats out. We just want to encourage everybody to, to keep an eye on the river and the water levels we'll be posting updates on that so uh let's go on i mean that's just one area of the department we've got a lot going on let's talk a little bit about summer programming uh maybe some activities that we have for kids uh obviously our community centers give us a little rundown of what's going on with community centers and our athletic divisions and our track programs we are we're opening back up and we are we're excited to see people back in our centers our summer programming at our community centers that's the dewey the bledsoe miller and south waco we're opening that back up to the kiddos this summer so kicking off on june 14th we'll have our summer programs in in full session and i'll tell you yeah. Right now we are at capacity at those centers and they've got activities lined up, you know, internal activities where they go hiking with our ranger program. Um, they've got some field trips scheduled, but they are, they're being very, you know, cautious, still aware that uh, safety is number one. So they're, they've added some protocols to daily operations. We've, um, you know, we've capped our capacity this year. We've lowered that a little bit to break into smaller groups. So definitely still, that's still part of our programming, but just excited to have the kids back in the centers this year. Sure, you know, and I want to say, we, we say we're at capacity starting, but one cool thing that, that I've always liked that we do is uh, we do a monthly format mm -hmm. uh, because I know that a lot of people take vacations. Right. So uh, definitely if you're interested in getting your kids oh, yeah. in one of our camps, call, get on the list. Spots come open all the yeah. time. And then if you can't do the first month, maybe the second month, Month. Um, and I tell you, I, I definitely want to mention there's a lot of other great camps around the city. Oh, yeah. um, our, our zoo hosts camps, uh, you know, you've got camps at McLean Stadium, the different museums around town. Waco just always does a great job community-wide to provide stuff for the kids. And uh, once again, we talked about last year not having July 4th, and you talk about a blow for our department not having the kids and, and that was hard I, I know both of us have young kids and where do your kids go during the summer so to be able to offer that opportunity back to the uh, public uh, we're excited about summer camps now um, Another program that we got that I always love to talk about, Team Waco. Mm -hmm. Tell a little bit about what Team Waco is and sort of that involvement as far as that program for the youth. Yeah, for sure. So our athletic division, they head up Team Waco, which is our summer track program. Um, each year we have, you know, uh, track, track, track and field stars from Baylor University and coaches come out that teach these kiddos the basics of track and field. We compete in different, you know, track and field days. We take them, um, I believe we still take them on uh, to a big track meet, like a regional yeah, track sure. meet. And, uh, you know, this is a great program. Not only is it developing the kids through track skills and athletics, but it's also very, it's, it's, it's a mentorship, I can say. You know, like, we've, like I said, they see these older kids that come out to, to teach and to coach, and they really look up to them. So a lot of return kiddos each year for our summer track program, yeah. Team Waco. We can... Well, I, you know, 
I always Great. have to brag on Cynthia Sims, our oh, yeah. athletic director, the program that she's created, and a little backstory. You know, you've got kids, and uh, use the example obviously uh, Will London. You know, you, yeah. you come up and they're in the program. They work with Baylor athletes and local coaches. Next thing you know, they become the athlete in the college. Right. Then they become the Olympian. And, and these are real stories. And Waco and Baylor just has such a great history of track and field. Um, and, and these kids are being able to run at the Hart Patterson track, um, a former Baylor site. Um, and they get out there every day. They do get to go to track meets and they compete for a chance to go what's called the Games of Texas, uh, basically an amateur Olympic style uh, celebration that's held at the end of the summer. Um, but you know, it's not only a time kids can stay active. Uh, uh, they make friendships, uh, they get to know role models, and just a great program. I know that's already underway if you're interested. Uh, make sure and give our office a call, and we'll try to get you in. But just another great program that we're doing in the summer. Um, you mentioned our park rangers. Yeah. Now, uh, I know that's an area that, that you oversee, and we got a great crew, and first and yeah. foremost, security. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that people visiting our parks are safe, uh, facilities are open and locked. But I always like to say uh, the park rangers are ambassadors. Are. Give us a little bit about the what the park rangers have going on this summer. Absolutely, and, and as you mentioned, they're ambassadors for our park. You know, they're very they're they're out there. People see them, people respect them, they like them. The kids absolutely adore the park rangers because they always have questions about the parks. Let it, yeah. Nobody knows our parks better I mean, than our park rangers. What kid doesn't? My kids want to be a park ranger. They, they do. Mean. It's like you know, we have our horse program out. They see the horses. They approach the horses. But you know, our park rangers do. They they do a lot of summer programming, not only with our summer camp kids where they do hiking and biking, but a lot of um, community partnerships. Just this last week, we uh, partnered with J.H. Hines, did a, an on-site program at Wilbur Austin Senior Park. Hands-on activities, um, you know, just different flower identification, nature type activities, and the kids just really enjoy it. Um, you know, our park, ran park rangers, they're, they're partnering with the zoo this summer, um, but they bring the community to the park. So it's yeah. kind of, it's a mutual setup because... The kids are getting to see the parks, and we're getting to showcase what we have. Where you know some of these some of these folks don't have the opportunity, or maybe they're a little timid to go yeah. into the trail system. Our park rangers are excellent. Well, tour and guides. I always say, if you ever in the park and you need something, yeah. or you just want. to flag down a ranger. Oh, yeah. uh, they're out and about every day. And for those just joining us, I am Jonathan Cook, Director of Parks and Recreation. And sitting down here today with our Program Manager of Community Engagement, Ms. Megan Davis. And I tell you, we've been going through a spill where we talked about a lot of Juneteenth events coming up, other events, July 4th, uh, different programs we have going on this summer. Uh, but want to take these last couple of minutes to talk about some other things in our department as far as development-wise. Uh, one big project that, that you've been heading up and working with our park development uh, program manager, Mr. Tom Balk, it is a master plan citywide of our trail system. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're engaged in that process. Tell us a little bit about the surveying that we've been doing and, and really sort of that engagement on really uh, seeing how we can better the trail system in Waco. Absolutely. You know, it is, like you said, it's a huge project. It's our strategic plan for our trails. What we want to do is we want to get the community's input. That is most important to see how we can look on, you know, connectivity, how we can better our trail system. So what we've done is we've taken it to the field. We've, you know, divided and conquered between our, our internal staff to go to different areas of the trail system to capture th their input, you know, engage with the community, find out what they like about the trails, what they want to see in the future, how can we help you, and, you know, when do you use the trails? So we wanted, we wanted to gauge this. So we have been seen at the Cotton Belt Trail. We've been in, in Cameron Park. You know, just here recently we did the uh, Lake Waco trail. Um, so yeah, it's just super important to, to grab the actual community, have their input and be able to talk to them about what they what they want to see. So we've well, been very successful on our on our intercept surveys on site sure. or you know on site. But then there's also our trail survey that's on our website that we encourage everyone to participate in. Whether you're a trail user or not Give us your input and see what you'd like, you know, what sure, you'd like I'll, to see. Always love hearing from people, and uh, whether it's a survey or whether it's a phone call, always encourage community members, give us a call. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you think, and this is a cool survey. We're already over 1,500 um, sure. submissions on, on the survey. This is a process that's going to be going on throughout the next year. Yeah. Uh, now, another cool one. Uh, we're going to be hitting you up twice on some surveys here. We're asking about the trails, but we're also starting a recreation strategic plan in our department. Part of that strategic 
strategic plan um, is going to be surveying again and seeing as far as our recreation programs. <laughs> but give us a little input on what we're trying to do with this strategic plan. Yeah, so our recreation uh, strategic plan is going to capture, you know, what we want to see within our centers, our community centers, as far as programming, where we can expand, you know, if we can reach different parts of the community. It also includes our athletics division, um, program, pretty much programming overall in our recreation staff in our department. I mean, you know, it's, it's super important for us to be out in the community to provide such services. So we, we do. Again, we want to survey the folks that, that utilize the service on what we can yeah. do better. We've, you know, we've got a lot of opportunities ahead and with us opening, we've kind of had a, a year to kind of brainstorm and I, get our mind right to expanding what we already offer. So we're, yeah, our staff, we're, we're really engaging and, and doing a lot of brainstorming. We have a new program manager that oversees our community centers yeah. that came in, you know, from the outside with some new knowledge. So that survey is going to, or that plan is going to capture, you know, what we can do better within our, our recreation well, division. You know, I've always said, I mean, the programs that our staff offers uh, and really the opportunities to give not only the youth, but different groups, yeah. just amazing here in Waco. Uh, but I tell you, you know, there, there's a, a difference. We want to, we're already, we know we're really good. We want to be really great. Um, and I tell you, that's on both sides, not only parks, but it's all, um, not only recreation, but it's on the park side as well. And um, I, I tell you, you know, doing this type of planning and, and we're, we've got a lot of plans going on and that's the foundation that we build. Yeah. Um, and really our approach to one, we lay that foundation and then we start building up and adding in those extra items, extra amenities and features across the board. Um, and so it's really important to take that step back and do a little analysis on where we're heading. And uh, from there, uh, you know, I, I always say with the Trails Master Plan and the Recreation Strategic Plan, you're able to get that action plan yeah. in place and, and the five year goals of, okay, during the next three to five years, this is what we want to try to accomplish um, and sort of build that data. And that's just where we're at. But I go back to it. First and foremost, you got to have the community engagement and we want to do what the community wants. And uh, we're here to serve our community with all of our, our areas. Um, you know, as I mentioned parks, we got some projects going on. Um, you know, not only we got the big one, Suspension Bridge. Give us a little update on where we're at on that project. Okay. Yeah, the Suspension Bridge. So it is undergoing the renovation. You know, we started earlier. Well, actually, we broke ground in October of 2020. Yeah. Um, it's about a two-year project that, you know, I feel like we're on task, uh, you know, on sure, the, on. we're on task to, to finish on time, you know, next year. Um, you know, it's a, it's a big transformation. And if you go downtown, you know, you see the Suspension Bridge. It looks like a big cocoon, cocoon right now. Yeah. It's, just, it's draped in tarp. But, man, when they reveal what we're going to see as far as the redevelopment, development of that it's going to be awesome we're going to be able to introduce that to the community next year and you know it's it's one of our biggest tourist attractions well so. i mean and one thing that i give kudos uh to what you and our marketing staff jessica maxwell have done uh you know throughout we do regular updates on our website and social media we've done some time lapse videos yeah um i saw just the other day as we've seen a lot of our tourists coming back for these summer trips uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. You can't walk, uh, you know, out on the bridge, but you go up to the construction site and we've got some real informative interpretive signage that explains what's going on with the project. And uh, I know there, there's been, uh, you know, it's been some challenges because we're used to spending so much time down there, especially yourself here at the summer and this time of year. But uh, we're making the best of it and it's going to be great. This is a generational project. Um, a couple other things that I'm excited part development wise, uh, we're really uh, getting heavy into to the design phase of our Lake Air Little League complex that's out uh, next to the Expo Event Center uh, to where it's really a collaborative project. Waco ISD is building a new track and field stadium. We just had the opening of, of the new base area that the county is behind. So that's an exciting project. Uh, another project we've got coming up in a master plan is for Cotton Palace Park. Um, and I, I tell you, that park is sort of right in the middle of Waco, right off the highway, one of our oldest parks that we have. And uh, so we're entering a phase where we're going to see how we can pick that one up. Buena Vista Park on the outside of town, putting in a new playground there. So definitely have a lot of exciting things going on as far as not only on the recreation side, the event side, the park side. Uh, we're just juggling, but we're moving forward. Um, with the time we got left, I, I want to talk some about, you mentioned partnerships. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about some of the partnerships that, that you're currently working on um, at, at our centers, maybe with sure. different training programs or, or maybe some cleanups. Tell us about how, why you feel partnerships are so important to what we do. Oh, I, I think partnerships are very important. It's a, like I said, when you can, when you join the community members together to, to achieve a certain goal, everyone wins. And, and one that I'm really excited about is a partnership we have with Keep Waco Beautiful 
in Central yeah. Texas Senior Ministries. I love to garden every year. My kids and I plant a garden and watch it grow. And uh, this year we were approached by both both partners um, at, for our Harrison Center. Sure. What we're going to do, Keep, Keep Waco Beautiful has donated some raised elevated um, planting boxes for our seniors. Yeah for our seniors to come out and plant and watch them grow. So this is going to be a new community uh, partnership that we're really excited. We're going to have about four planters there just right next to the Harrison Center. Um, and like I said, it's going to be from start to finish. We're, we're going to have the seniors come out and transplant flowers that they choose, you know, and, and cultivate that and watch them over the summer really develop. So that's a really good partnership. And Keep Waco Beautiful, they are. They're a partner in a lot of uh, things that we do as far as park cleanups. Just this last weekend, their crew came out and did all of the trash and recycling for the uh, the marathon yeah. that we had I mean they brought a whole crew and then they were they're digging through recycle bins to make sure there's not contamination and uh, so those are definitely partnerships that we hold really close to our uh, hearts you know and you mentioned keep Waco beautiful yeah. one program that that's just we love to, to help with it's our adopt a park program yes um, you know and this is different organizations and groups if you're interested in adopting a park let us know uh, and what it is you come out you sign up for a year uh, you do cleanups throughout the year now uh, Obviously, we're in the parks every day, and our crews are cleaning them, cleaning up the river area. But we have so many people coming out to make sure that our parks are looking spotless and getting that trash picked up. And that's a great program they have as well. Um, what about the Cameron Park Zoo? You mentioned our park rangers are going to be helping with them. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, I know the zoo has some camps going on, but the relationship that we have with the zoo most definitely. I mean, well, they're right in our park, so they definitely are our neighbors, and you know, we do. We have a lot of collaboration with them. Our park rangers this summer are going to take some of the zoo camp kiddos. Yeah. They do a great job with their zoo camps. They're going to take them to the park to do to lead some hiking and some biking activities. Um, you know, we work really well with their education curator, Connie Kastner. Um, there's a lot of, you know, crossover on what we do. So, yeah, we're excited to be part of a, you know, a collaborative effort with them this summer to, to bring the kiddos to the parks. Like I said, showcase areas outside of the zoo, yeah. and in turn, you know, our rangers get to go over there and take the horses and you know, meet and greet the kids as they enter into, you know, the zoo and the park. So well, excited about know, that. And it makes me think of another. You said showcase the parks. Uh, another collaboration that we're doing this year is with our uh, Waco and McLennan County Library partners. Yes. Uh, to where they're going to be doing story times in the park. Um, and they do their summer reading programs and always a, a great tradition here. But they're going to be going out to our parks as well at our community centers. Um, you know, another project that real quick, uh, you know, I think with our health district. We've got some art projects Dude. where families design some sidewalk obstacle courses so I, I tell you just a tremendous amount of activity going on and uh, you know we're coming to our end of our time here and, and I'm thinking summer and uh, my brain's going so I'm gonna ask you what's something in an apartment if you got somebody coming in town what's something that a family can come and do when they're visiting Waco oh well I'm gonna go with Cameron Park all the way sure. I mean it's it's a beauty in our backyard and you know there's something for everyone in your family yeah. you may not be the you're the avid runner or the biker but you can take a trail and casually walk along the river trail. We've got the splash pads that the kids yeah. absolutely love. Different playground spots throughout the park. So I definitely, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little, uh, I lean towards the park yeah. in many different ways, but I would definitely suggest getting out and just seeing seeing the beauty that we have right here in our backyard of Waco. Well, that's a good, excellent, and obviously we love showcasing those natural areas. I think the Waco Mammoth National Monument, yes. uh, another great place. How many cities actually have a, a national park, national monument here in our own backyard? Are just Absolutely. a fascinating site. Um, you know, we talk about our Cottonwood Creek Golf yes. Course. Uh, you know, all right, for the dads you're coming in town or even local, they've got some youth programs coming up this summer as well. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you, our Riverbend Park is buzzing with baseball teams coming in town. It's all over. I tell you, it's going to be a great summer. And I want to say how much we appreciate the work that you do for the city. Everybody, don't forget July 4th coming up. But I'm Jonathan Cook with Parks and Recreation. Megan Davis, thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you out in the parks of Waco. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed City Talk, a production of the City of Waco. Catch this program on local radio stations on Sunday mornings at 6.30 a.m. Find the podcast on your favorite podcast streaming service by searching City of Waco or view it online at wccc.tv.